and for his blessings. He has now come in our midst. He's with us. We don't see him as a spook. Right. He's no spook. He's a live man. He's a living God. And I have not asked you to sit down. You look so beautiful. <laughs> and I don't want you to sit down. <laughs> I'm a guest, and maybe he could help me to uh, convey a message to you. He's my friend. I like him a lot, and I'm going to tell you why I brought him in and why I think he's important to the future of you learning about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And his name is uh, Yosef bin Asiel Israel. Salam alaykum. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful, who appeared in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, to whom righteous and holy praise is forever due, we thank that great God for his coming to the wilderness of North America to raise up amongst us the first begotten from the dead, that special soul, I speak none other than the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. In those holy and righteous names, I greet you in the words of peace. Assalam alaikum. We'll be right back after these quick commercials. Looking for something that feels good, looks great, and stands the test of time? Well, we have it for you. Black Royalty is our athleisure line that is made from the finest bamboo and cotton blend. We have design, high quality, tracksuit, and t-shirts in multiple colors that provide you the most comfort when you need it most. Whether you're in the gym or running errands or just lounging around with loved ones, you need to be in the best quality clothing as possible. We have constructed a high quality clothing line that does not break the bank and we beat out all of our competitors on price. So please, if you're interested in being comfortable, not just in the gym, but when you're running around and doing errands, Please visit BlackRoyaltyWear.com. Also, you can find us on Instagram at Black Royalty. And if you have any questions or comments about our brand and how you can help participate, you can find us at BlackRoyaltyWear at gmail.com. We will be quick to answer your questions, and with our responses, we will be very thorough. So also, like I said, Black Royalty is for you because it was made by you with the intentions of serving you. So leave all those other clothing lines behind and get on what makes sense. Something that's going to stand the test of time. Because black don't... Assalamu alaikum. Know Thyself Radio Show is a podcast dedicated to take on the social and psychological issues of today by using the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. This podcast challenges the societal ills of today and uses the message of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad to intelligently improve our current circumstances. Every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, we upload on all major streaming platforms. Type in Know Thyself Radio Show, Google Play Music, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and many, many more. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back again to another installment of Know Thyself Radio Show. But we make it our business, our duty, our responsibility to give you nothing but the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And as always, it's an honor to come before you, to grace this microphone, to bear witness to the greatness of the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And I'm so humbled to say in this day and time that I have the ability, the desire, and the platform that I can not just espouse my perspective, but to give you a complete and thorough knowledge of what has to come, what has happened, and what is taking place now. So, for those of us who have this message, for those of us who are connected to this root knowledge of the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, we have, again, a responsibility and an obligation, one, to be the 
perpetuators of that truth and knowledge, to be the example of that reality, and to lead those by showing them how a righteous man and or woman should be. But we also have the ability to come and to put out the fires of lies and deception that have been created by our open and outright enemy. Some things we just can't overlook. Some things we just can't take for granted. And the reality is, is that we live in a time where the enemy knows he's on his way out. We live in a time where the enemy knows he only has so much to do in such little time. What am I saying? I'm saying that we're in a time that you are seeing the extinction of the white man as we know it. But evil has the ability to rear its ugly head up in different areas through different venues. And so what he is doing in his pursuit to maintain, control, and prolong his life is to somehow, some way, put that desire of deception, put that desire of hate and envy and disdain in you to a point that even when he is physically gone, the remnants of his persona is still being exemplified in all of us, the original man and woman. And that's why it's so important that we take heed to the message of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad because the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad's message was given to him from God Almighty who appeared in the person of Master Farad Muhammad to whom righteous and holy praise is forever due. So we know that message is tailor-made for the black man and woman throughout the planet, but in particularly here in the hills and wilderness of North America. So as we see the paradigm shift take place, we have to be very circumspect on what's happening. And a lot of us in this day and time, and I know this is the third installment, the third consecutive week that I've brought up this COVID-19 circumstance and pandemic. But it's one that we have to, as this thing progresses and develops, address it so that we have a clear understanding so that we don't succumb and befall the same psychological Impediments that our other brothers and sisters who feel that what they are seeing on TV that is being disseminated through this government and other fractions of this satanic world being told. See, we in our minds and our hearts know that the white man is a devil and that he has done nothing but perpetuate lies and deception. But at the end of the day, we still are too lazy, too, in a way, destroyed to even put up a fight. And so instead of doing our own research, instead of doing our own due diligence, instead of taking study serious and really internalizing what's going on so that we can properly access externally what is transpiring, We just relinquish our ability and the capacity to think and say whatever he says is true. So we're just going to go along to get along. Now that's dangerous. You're talking about cognitive dissonance at the highest level. Two totally distinctive different ideas occupying the mind in that same place at the same time. How can we have two things that's diametrically opposed occupying the same space? But that's what we do today. Because we know the black man and woman now, especially. Now you have a younger demographic and generation who feel that throughout time things have gotten better and that they are totally ingratiated in this society and they're seen as Americans just as everybody else. But the reality though, we know that's so far from the truth. But through this technological age, so to speak, and this age of information and accessibility, it seems to make all of us feel more 
or less if if we on an even playing field. But even in that, you can see the blatant and overt racism that is taking place each and every day. So most of us, even our children, have been programmed to almost ignore the realities of it. Because there's a new social media platform that's been around for a couple years now called TikTok that's really took it off, especially since this pandemic pandemic, excuse me, since everybody's been home. And all you see, which we're in a post racial state, we in the post Obama first black president state, that we ignore these things, but children White adults, young adults to children, 21 and under, uh, and Asians, and everybody who's not black are getting on these platforms and being blatant in their anti-black racism. Why am I even bringing it up? You so said they're just children. They're just, they're just having fun. They're just saying, no. We're seeing again over time in this supposed post-racial state that Yes, race still racism still exists and race still matters and is the most forward thinking thought that precedes everybody's actions. Now you can ignore that reality if you like, but that doesn't diminish the truth of it. That doesn't take away from the reality of what's really going on. And so we have to realize what is really going on right now in America and throughout the world and what is our position in it and how are we going to appropriately approach this strategically now we are dealing with here in America in particular throughout the world but I'm going to talk about America in the context of the conversation that we're having today we are under especially most urban Metropolitan areas, a stay at home order. In particular, in the more black centered cities and regions of this country Los Angeles, New York City, Chicago, and we can go on and on and on. And for the most part, though we were agitated at first, we've been in compliance. Black people, one, are used to it to a certain extent. Most of us already, even if we haven't been in jail or already home or juvenile detention centers, have been conditioned to accept a certain level of limited movement as well as being dictated by those who are over authority of us usually white people that we are compliant so we are not putting up a fight like they tried to put out there but you know who is white society why is this important because we see firsthand again the realities of systematic oppression of black people the creating and the construction of certain narratives that keep you psychologically destitute and deprived of not just resources but any type of intellect to properly discern so again we are seeing especially in middle America down south in rural areas of even those certain places that I mentioned before white people in mass numbers standing up and protesting saying that the government has been an oppressive force in their lives that they've been tyrannical that they have been overstepping their boundaries and they're going to enact not just their first amendment right the right to free speech and to assemble, but the right to bear arms in the case of having to overthrow a tyrannous government, a tyrannical government. 
Now, listen to this. The premise on which they're operating is, is that you are not only putting us on a stay-at-home order or restricting our movement, you are putting us in the boat of those Negroes. Hear me out now. There's been many occasions where a lot of these protesters have got on television and said publicly, you know, we don't have a problem with stay-at-home orders in places where there's a lot of people like Detroit, Chicago, but in these rural areas, it shouldn't be the same. Meaning, this is their coded language that they use. We don't put ourselves in the same boat as those Negroes. You can keep them at home. Matter of fact, that's I put them back in jails, create more places that we can house these Negroes in those cages. But to think that you're going to put us in the same boat as Negroes when the system that has been built and the way it's sustained is on white supremacy and it's us playing a role, but we have already proven that no matter how destitute we are, no matter how uneducated we are, no matter how broke or deprived of resources we are, no matter how messed out we are, we still are totally satisfied with our life because at the end of the day, we know that we have a superior position over the blacks in this country who are at a perpetual underclass. And when you start to do things that mirror our movement as equal to theirs, that's when you got to go. That's how they operate in this country. So I want black people to take into the reality of what's truly taking place. You are dealing with, on all fronts, a government who's lying publicly about the numbers and misrepresenting the death count and the affections of COVID-19 and putting out the narrative again that, hey, you Negroes are the problem again. It's because all that bad eating you have, all that cigarettes and all that weed you smoke and all that liquor you drink. As if white people don't eat the worst of foods. As if white people don't drink and smoke cigars and chew tobacco. I mean, let's be realistic. As the opioid crisis isn't disproportionately, since they want to use that word, devastating white middle class or rural lower class society. Both of them, middle class and the lower class. So again, why are they doing that? It's because they want to keep you in the position of one, fear, and second, hopelessness. You don't have a chance, Negro. And so when you see these white men marching, yeah, they have to. They may take it to the American government or march, but most likely they're not. But you know who they will start shooting if given the opportunity because they've done it before and they're doing it now in the form of guys like Trayvon Martin being murdered by those race is white supremacists like George Zimmerman those who are in the blue uniforms who kill under the guise of serving and protect but are operating with a white supremacist mentality. See, we're not going to again allow our people to be deceived, to be deceived in mass numbers without speaking truth to power and giving the appropriate solutions so that we can change our circumstances and situations. And that's why we go to the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Because the most honorable Elijah Muhammad does not just have the plan, he has the complete knowledge and plan on how to free our people. Listen to this. This comes from the book, The Fall of America, page 50. I'm sorry, page 209, chapter 50. Fire fed with fuel. Listen to this. We do not hope 
for peace as long as we add to war that which serves as the fuel to a fire. The fire cannot go out as long as we keep it burning by adding more fuel. A dying, burning fire is increased when more fuel is thrown into it. I'm going to stop there for a second. You are the fuel that is adding to the fire of white supremacy and our own oppression. Your participation is what allows this country to continue to keep its foot on our necks and inevitably keeping them in a position of power. So you being reluctant to take your place in your rightful position in this world has allowed this devil, this adversary, this open enemy of life to continue to be so dominating and overwhelming over the peoples of this planet. You let them get on TV. We let them get on TV and say the problem is the reason why you got coronavirus is because you Negroes ain't eating healthy. Because you're smoking too much weed and cigarettes and drinking too much liquor. And then say that you're disproportionately being affected by coronavirus. And yet they tell you the remedy for that is stay at home. But everybody else who's disproportionately affected, you create relief packages and stimulus packages for. You put resources together and create institutions to protect and elevate them, whether it be illegal immigrants, whether it be Asians, whether it be Jews, whether it be European nations. But when it comes to us, the real founding fathers of this country the real builders and the architects and the masterminds of what made this the nation that it is today, you tell us that you can't do anything for us. Reparations out of the question. Relief packages out of the question. Stimulus packages out of the question. But we can tell you Negroes to stay at home and eat some eat better. And you try to out try to out these hand-picked, made coons like the Surgeon General who gets up there and says, do it for your papa, do it for your abuela, do it for your big mama. This is what you give us while your people get access to capital and resources. Going back to the messenger, there are a lot of people who are so anxious for peace so that they can return to committing which they lack in love, idling, sport, and play. The world that we live in desires, first of all, to hide the truth to keep the black man who was made blind, deaf, and dumb by scientific technology of the white race so that the white race can continue to carry on the same deceiving and wickedness that they have been practicing. How can we expect peace where the method used to bring about peace is the same method that started the war instead of finding a right solution and then practicing the right solution we'll stop there the most honorable Elijah Muhammad makes it so clear again you don't want peace because to really have peace you have to bring up into peace you have to bring into existence that peace with your own doings, with your own toil, with your own labor, with your own work, with your own mind, with your own God, with your own people. See, that's what it's going to take to be free. That's what it's going to take to live in a society that's full of peace and full of love and full of justice and full of equality. You want the white man to keep dictating the terms so you don't have to be accountable and responsible for your actions. That's what you want. But the Most Honorable Elijah teaches us that the right solution is to do for self. No self. Know the devil. Pull yourself together. Pull your resources together. And then start to create the world that we so desperately need. The time is now. And we must, again, we must not be afraid of what's taking place. And we must galvanize. We must unite. And we must do what is necessary to bring into existence the change that the planet needs. But most importantly, you and I. And it's only going to come from my mind. I thank you for listening as I leave you in the words of peace and paradise. Assalamu alaikum.